Okay then, now time to crack on with the crew part of this uh, slog off. So, I'm really hoping that these are going to be a simple build. However, I also know from experience of doing, well, goblinoid crews and grot crews, they have this horrible habit of being an absolute nightmare. Now, the good thing is you've got a few options. I'm going to start off. I need to get hold of 32, which is this one here. And with the crew options, if I just get this guy off properly, you do seem to have a choice between a long net, um, yeah, like a, a throwing net, by the look of it, which is. This 30, 30, ooh, 35, where's that one? 35, or potentially a kind of man catcher, this one here. So again, it's it's nice to have these options. I, I think what I want to do is, I don't want too many long poles on this model because it'll look a bit all over the place. So I'm definitely going to go for that one on the next model which means I need to get 35 here. This will be the catching net. I like this. There's something, um, I, said, I know it's all about swamps and stuff like that, but it's like all these netting and everything just feels very, um, what's it called now? Very nautical. get this guy done now I'll double check if there's head options but I think with the head it's just one head option which is 33 there might be other head options but that's the only obvious one at the moment that I can see so actually I like the fact that there are choices on this because it means that if you ever manage to get another one, they're not just going to look identical, even with the crew. It's going to be just subtle differences to make them a bit more interesting. Just trying to make sure I don't cut off anything important on this helmet. So, nice little net there. Going to be an absolute pain to paint that guy, isn't it? <laughs> right. Next one, 36, Bobby. Let me find the 36, Bobby, here. You know, a, a huge amount of this, uh, although it's a very different model entirely, the <laughs> the kind of things that are on this, um, I don't know, kind of reminds me of a weird combination of the Snotling Pump Wagon that used to be a thing, and kind of like the Empire War Wagon from Old Hammer. 
like just the way that it kind of has like weird combinations but of course then it's mounted on the back of a a sluggy uh you know slug off beast <laughs> okay head number 31 i think oh no 37 this one over here nice hood on it yeah, so I don't know. I think the, the grots on the top give me kind of a vibe of both of them. Spike this thing, not exactly easy to clean up. There we go. Gosh, look at that one, Cole, eh? <laughs> Not easy to do that one. Okay, now, 26 and 27. This is where I'm going to start building. Where is it now? What looks like the kind of drummer. 26 was 27. I think. Yep, there's 27. So this part kind of clicks on here by the look of it. Let me just check positioning. So foot goes up and then, uh, yeah, flat part into there. the other half so we need to do 20 oh, t middle part first number 28 which is the top of this drum Better, 
and get this on just right. So looks like just trying to work out where this nests into. Ah, there we go. So this top part is his body. I've just realised what that is. It's the top of his body, the drum settling downwards. Twenty nine. So that should be this part over here. And this is obviously going to pop into there. Right, next. 30, which is one of the drum arms over here. I actually really enjoyed reading one of the more recent issues as well. Um, one thing that I found very funny is the idea of um, the kind of realm of shadows. I think it is worth, well, and is it death magic? I think it is. And they're talking about how there's absolutely loads of uh, Uruks there. And I thought, okay, that's pretty cool. And then it, it goes on to basically say that no one really knows if the the Uruks that are there are actually dead and just carry on fighting in the afterlife or invading. Now, I found that absolutely brilliant. Uh, just a funny little thing, sidebar, I just thought I'd talk about something. Uh, so it's an interesting little sidebar, 31. Uh, this um, because I was thinking about like this guy here. He's you know he's got his drums and he's banging away, so he's calling to war. Um, there's something about Orux, and you know it, it crosses over to all, all orcoid races. So, ooh, so if you imagine, helps if I don't keep dropping this, that orcs in 40k um, exist in this kind of you know, hardcore belief that whatever they truly want to be true is true. And the thing is, I think with the with the Nuruk, it's going to basically feel like if it dies, it's going to be very happy <laughs> because it's not even going to notice uh, that it's dead as long as it's fighting. So if it gets recreated in an afterlife it's probably going to believe that it's gone to a place for fighting and its body's probably going to come back anyway. So I find that, you know, it's going to be believe itself to be a, a... It's not going to care if it's alive or dead. So it's probably even going to be so certain in its own belief of how awesome it is and indestructible it is that even if it dies and goes to an afterlife, it probably comes back to life again. <laughs> so uh, I found that an interesting little thing. Um, so we're doing 10... 11 12 now get this thing off so uh i like the i mean i've always had a, a love for undead things i think quite a lot of people who collect fantasy um have a sort of morbid fascination with undead you know as a as a faction i definitely do and i used to i think Possibly one of the first plastic kits that I ever got was the 
completely amazing skeleton multi-part kit and I always find them really interesting in fact I remember that that kit being around for a very long time it was so good it took a very long time for them to top it 12 and 11 got 12 out yeah but uh, I'm glad my my son's decided he wants the night haunt forces Because they ended up definitely an interesting faction. <clears throat> and as I said, I think uh, I've probably mentioned in a previous video, Nagash, Supreme Lord of the Undead, is just an amazing character. Right, I think we're slowly getting towards the last major parts now. So I need to put this so that that part there, the middle part, oop, it's pointing upwards. And then we've got to have some of these dangling. So this one, let's see where this one looks like it goes. I'm just checking something here actually. I think I might um am I putting this back to front? I am aren't I? So one on that side. So I wonder it wasn't putting in. I'll put the glue on that one as well ready. So then this one pops in here. And then this one it's gonna pop in here. Then get 13 and 14. So 13 is this set of chains. Fourteen. Definitely like this, and it's a very interesting kit, and I, I think it's got a lot of character to it really. It's definitely a nice centerpiece model. careful with these when I'm cleaning them up. See that one though is not properly cut off. To there, and the shorter one, I'm gonna have this one. There we go, nice effect. That, and as I said, I, I like the, the the drooping effect on it all, it just adds some nice details. 43, vision on this properly so I can get this way round these downwards and then this is gonna pop onto the front there so there's basically a little notch here one there and one there that allows that to pit fit quite nicely right in there Right, so that's some kind of, you know, basically tools of their slaving trade. 
Now let me go get this log off now because this is going to go onto the back of it. Just trying to work out how this attaches now. So just get this gently. It feels. Let me just dry fit it just to make sure I'm right. Yeah. Kind of latches onto the back of this here. that by the seeming of it hey, this is going to be a pain <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. That should be quite all right. Hope that stays on now it's got quite a bit of a problem in a sense that the weight of it is backwards so there's always a slight chance that that's going to kind of pull away as it's drying I'm just a bit conscious of that so i'm just trying to make sure that it's bonded okay so what we're not going to do is glue anything on because if i had to glue the actual troops on it's going to make it very difficult later on for painting. However, the drummer looks like he affixes towards the back of this. It's kind of like little notches there. The other guys now, it feels like there's kind of little foot points here. So, I'm going to have to check this over. She got one like that. And then I think the other one goes there. And then there's little notches. I'm not going to put them in, but there you go. That's how they kind of slide in and connect together. That's how they'll glue on in the end. But as you might guess, it's going to make painting nigh on impossible. However, there we go. That is the Slogoth March, Marsh Crawler Slogoth um, <laughs> from Issues 19. Is it? 20 and 21, I think. I've, I've lost track now. So actually, I really like this model. Um, I love anything sort of... See, I like I like mounts. I like things that you could consider to be pets. And there we go. They've got this weird, creepy pet slog off. Anyway, I'm going to put that video up now. And please, thank you for watching. Please, please, please like and subscribe. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Were actually, I think, 50-50 um, between putting a Rogal Dawn together or building my um, Orc Boys, my uh, Big Macs, I think they are. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.